So welcome to the Awakening Series. My name is Kimberly Archuleta. Today we have an honored guest. Her name is Keo Frazier. She's an amazing person and I've been a fan of hers for quite some time. Keo, I wanted to ask you about your journey. It's, you're so successful, you're so beautiful, you're amazing. A pillar in the community, like a civic leader. Please tell us how you got to where you are today. Sure. Well, thank you. I'm a, such a fan of yours. Thank you. And so thank you for having me here and having me to do this. So how did I get here? That's such a broad question. Um, but I think one is, um, I think I could start with, there's a couple of ways I can start. One is that I do come from a single mother and like she is like my, I know this sounds so cliche, like she's my hero and like she's the, one of the most amazing people that I, that I know. I um, that. She has like so many degrees she's a ordained minister she's wow. really accomplished and she did this all while like raising me and that's such an inspiration and i think the other piece that got me here is i've had cancer three times in life and um and i i think that that sort of helped me to hone in on my why and my impact and recognizing that to, like tomorrow isn't promised to us and so it's so important for us to um, decide on a daily basis to um, how are we walking through this life, how are we making impact in this life, and how are we affecting other people. And some days I'm not successful, right, because I'm just like this human being getting through like everybody else. Um, but if I'm constantly reminded of that, and um, then I, I constantly want to, to try to make an impact. And so what got me here with the things that I do, it's more about that those reasons is that I come from someone who is very inspirational and then also I have this like need in my soul to um, to make this positive impact on the world. You are doing so many positive things. It's it's amazing. As a female entrepreneur times two, as a minority, as a woman, um, I noticed that you just you you bring people up. Like your level, like when people are around you is like you actually like bring it up one notch or two notches. Like it's such a not many people can do that, and and you do that. Like how do you do that? Like how do you bring yourself to this level that's ab like basically above most people in general? Like the everyday hi, how are you? You're like, hi, how are you? Meet this person, meet this person. Like, it's, it's contagious, and I love it. Something in, a, in the light that you bring, mm -hmm. right? And I think for me that I bring a light into the space that I'm in. That, yeah. And so, and what I'm also trying to do or want to do or just part of who I am mm -hmm. is that I feel like we are in this all together. Mm -hmm. And so I can't imagine being something else or not bringing that to a space or not connecting people or not trying to figure out how do we make this better? Mm -hmm. How do we make this space better? I, so I think it's just a part of like who I am intrinsically. And, and if, I'm, if I'm not that way, then something's going on with me, right? right? Mm -hmm. And versus like, this is just like, I woke up like this, you guys. I just was born. Came out, yeah. <laughs> like it can't be anything else. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, as far as your your marketing uh, firms, tell us how how you decided. Like, what was that that shift in your life that allowed you to just understand that marketing is your purpose for the moment at that point sure. in time. That's a great question, and um, I actually have an answer for that. But um, I started out thinking I wanted to be a psychoanalytic therapist, if you can believe it or not. <laughs> and I studied under people that were very famous, and no one will know this unless you're in psychology. Um, from that experience, I remember sitting in a room with all these like great minds, and they actually told me that I was going into a dying field. Oh. and. And I, that always sort of resonated in the back of my mind. And then when I started to do the work in the field, I wanted to work with youth. And I started working with children at the Kemp Center here in Denver. Wow. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't see these abused children mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. It just like tore me apart. So what I did is I thought about, well, what does that look like um, for what do I really like about psychology, right? Like if, it, if it's not this. And some of my favorite coursework, some of my um, favorite books, one of my favorite book is, books is written by Robert Cialdini, and it's called, uh, it's called um, How to Influence People. And so 
that is, um, so thinking about influence, like I thought, well, what is, what can I do to harness this piece of psychology that I really like? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, marketing made sense, right? Mm -hmm. And I started my first marketing company when I was working as a researcher in psychology. Wow. Yeah, and I um, did this, I actually started a guerrilla marketing company. It was like street teams everywhere. And I did it without knowing anything, right? Because I knew how to write papers and do research. I didn't know how to start a company. And so <laughs> I would read books and people asked me to write a contract. I'd go to the library and get a book on writing contracts. I didn't go get a lawyer. I got a book on writing contracts. And then I write the contract. And that first company, I had 65 um, like employees, students working with me. And we oh did goodness. these campaigns. Like we did the United Airlines TED campaign. Um, we did. Um, a Wells Fargo campaign around fresh produce, or not Wells Fargo, sorry, Super Target campaign around fresh produce, and then a couple other things. Um, and what I learned about that is that I could t completely channel the pieces of psychology that I really loved into marketing around influence people, and again, making that positive impact and influencing people in a positive way, doing it through marketing and branding campaigns. and. Actually, what I learned is marketing is my calling. Like I can do, like I can write a marketing plan, like with my eyes closed. Like I can totally do that in two hours, but don't tell my clients that, because um, I definitely charge them more than two hours. And so, but um, it's, it turned out to be my calling. And so, but I know I went through it a kind of different way, um, but I use psychology every day in what I do, and and so it just fits well with marketing. Then my second company. I was around nine people worked with me. And the reason why I say people, because some people are contractors, some people are employees, and so it's hard to really say exactly. Um, and sometimes they fluctuate it depending on their work. And, and that one I had, that one's the one I have for the longest. And I sold both companies in pieces and parts, wow. like the list and the clients or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then I've also had other companies that I don't mention. I, I think I'm an inventor. Um, <laughs> a so true I, visualizer that's a doer. Yeah. That's awesome, inventor. Like yeah, that. and so like I, I invent these products that don't really go to market. <laughs> um, like <laughs> if I told you some of the things that I've invented, you'd totally crack up laughing. But, um, but then they always die in R&D because like I'm not, yeah, I'm not really good at the inventing part, but, I, but it's like this thing that I want to do, right? Yeah. And so. Sometimes I go and think, oh my God, I have this amazing idea. So one of the ones, I had this idea of, you know, like, you know how when you're eating with your chopsticks mm -hmm. and you kind of sometimes need a spoon, right? <laughs> and so I was like, what if we could just make this utensil that all of them, like a, like a, like a Swiss army knife for eating. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so I like did all this thing, had an engineer, we like created this whole intricate thing. <laughs> and then I go into the store, like at the Sakura Square, and it was like chopsticks with a fork and a knife on the end. And I was like, Dang it. <laughs> and it was like just plastic, super easy. And I made this whole thing that was like all intricate and fold out and pop out and all this stuff. And like, I was like, darn it, it's never going to work. Uh, so I have a couple of things that, that I've invented. Like an invented mind. Not many people have it. So for you to actually like put pen to paper with your idea, that's that's fantastic. I, I think I come up with multiple ideas, but I don't usually put pen to paper and then go into an engineer's shop and say, hey, can you create this? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> I, I mean, I have another thing that I had 3D printed. I could go on about these things that I've invented. They never pan out, but... <laughs> Maybe one day. One day. One, one day. day. <laughs> you never know. That's awesome. Well, very cool. I appreciate that. Um, as far as your as your day in, day out activities, what are you doing today to change the world tomorrow? Great question. Um, well, I hope, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, I started this thing called New Thinkers and it's around individuals who are trying to create change and solve world problems. And I started it because I think, I felt like there needed to be a space for those individuals to come together and in a space where, they, where conversations could be had and then and things could be created and action could start. If you could write a statement to your younger self, mm -hmm. what would you say? Oh, you know what? 
I know what I would tell my younger self. I used to be this like bull in a china shop type person where I would just come in, I'd always have to have the first word, the last word. Yeah, I, I had to be heard, right? And we could talk about wh where all that comes from. But um, I would tell my younger self to be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. um, because now when I walk in a room, I actually don't say much and I wait. And then I usually end up saying one thing, um, but it's something impactful, right? And so I would tell my younger self to shut up, sit down, listen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. So where does Keo Frazier want to be in 10 years? Man, I really want to tell you guys that I want to be on a beach somewhere, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's going to happen in 10 years. <laughs> um, in 10 years, I hope that I can look back and say that all the things that I've curated are still going and that it's actually influencing other people. It's not necessarily about me, it's about others, and it's about that reverberation of that energy that I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. And then then maybe I will be sitting on the beach, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I hope that all these things that I'm trying to curate um, are still around and they've grown to exponential level where I don't need to exist, right? Like that it's just happening. That's awesome. Yeah. Lastly, what is your favorite thing to do? I have a ton of those. I do have this new little puppy that I love. <laughs> Adorable. Like, it's like so I just pretty. love this little dog and I just had her for three weeks. I don't even understand it. Um, but one thing that I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I, ha I love this book called Tools, Tools of Titans. And that is something I learned from Tools of Titans is every day I wake up and I write down my three wins. Like what, what will make this a win day? And that has created so much focus in my world and my life. And I look forward to every morning to writing down my wins. And the mornings that I don't write down my wins, I feel a little like, oh wait, what am I, what's my focus today? You know? And so it's like I make a point to write my wins down. And if I miss it because I'm running late or something, I pull myself aside, right? Myself. And I'm like, cute sit down, write your wins. Even if it's on like a sticky note, like one time I wrote it on my hand in a meeting <laughs> because I was like, I need to stay focused on this day. And so that's one of my favorite things to do. I love it. That's amazing. And I'm going to pick up that book for sure. Yeah, it's a, I, I honestly have it on my like coffee table. I don't have a coffee table, I have an ottoman that's like, so it's dual purpose, but I sit it right there so that that's something that is always and present in my world. And it's like something you can pick up, you need some inspiration, you need like, hey, I'm feeling a little not motivated. Let me go check out what somebody else has done in this case. And it's just been useful to see that one is, we are all so similar and we can learn from all of us. And, and the things that make some people successful might help you too. So yeah. it's just been such like a good, useful book for, for me. I love that. And, and uh, reading your bios, um, you have your, your amazing bio, I actually was interested because you must do this really well. I don't think I do it that well. So if you can teach me somehow, you say you do one thing great. And I seem to have my hand in so many things and mm -hmm. I need to sometimes focus and mm -hmm. do that one thing that's great. What and how do you do that? Uh, I think it's I think we all have like when you're you're a motivated person, you have this wandering mind and wandering heart, right? So like I bought a guitar once and I played it for like a week or tried, mm -hmm. and then I haven't picked it up again, right? <laughs> and, and so I think that I have that wanderingness too, but mine is like in this real like creative side of it, mm -hmm. and I always come back to what what's my why here, mm -hmm. and um, and my why is about making this positive impact and creating. Um, these micro micro ways for people to solve world problems so they can do it on a macro level and so I think if you always come back to your why mm -hmm. then you'll then it's easier to focus on your what and you know exactly where that comes from absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely thank yeah. you that was beautiful yeah. oh, lovely um, thank you so much Q where can we find you you can follow me anywhere all my handles are the same there it's Keo's marketing everywhere you can, and K-E-O-S marketing Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're so lovely. Aww, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>